So in the last video, we talked about how to create a table and a contingency table. Now we're going to talk about graphical summaries and numerical summaries. So the first one we're going to mention is the bar plot. So the bar plot is basically a way to produce a graphical display of a table. So in our first table, we had the types of hot dogs and their count. So let's create a bar plot of that. To do that, we use a step called proc gchart. As always, data is equal to hot dogs. And to create a bar plot, we use vbar and then type. So once we run this, now we get here. So we have the graphical display of the beef meat, and poultry hot dogs. But let's say we want to make this a bit more interesting. As we saw with the contingency table, we can create uh, a table such that the cross-references type based on whether or not they're healthy. And we can do the same thing with a bar plot. Again, we'll run proc gchart that is equal to hot dogs. And again, vbar is type but we'll add in subgroups, which is equal to calories. Now remember that calories is a continuous variable, so we need to use its format function that will dichotomize based on the values within healthy. And again, recall, you need to have this period. Now to get this, now if we run this, then we get the exact same thing as before, but is now split into two different colors based on red being false. So the unhealthy ones versus the healthy ones within beef, unhealthy versus healthy in meat, and for poultry, they are all healthy. Now an alternative method to this is going back to data set 2, hot dogs 2. So gchart data is equal to hot dogs 2. Remember that we created a variable called healthy. So we can do the same thing, type, and then subgroups is equal to healthy. And then we don't need to use the format option. So if we run this, we get a similar looking thing, except now red means healthy, 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 and blue means unhealthy. So essentially, we have the exact same thing between these two options, except that the colors are inverted but that's not really that big of a deal. So then the second type of graphical summary we're going to use is called the histogram. Now the histogram is very important because it shows us the display, uh, sorry, the, the distribution of a data set. This becomes more important when we talk about normally distributed data that is supposed to look like a bell curve shape. Now to get that, we have to use what's called the proc univariate. And again, we're going to use calories as our variable of interest. And then we'll just tell proc univariate that I want a histogram. So if I run this and I scroll down, now I have the spread of the data. What this tells me is two things. One, because it does not follow a bell curve shape, it's not normally distributed. And since majority of the frequency occurs on this side here and is much higher, most of the observations are greater than 100 calories. And so this is how we can derive some pieces of information using the histogram. Now the third, and probably one of the more important ones, is the box plot. And what the box plot does is it also tells us information about the spread, it tells us the IQR, as well as the first, second, and third quartiles, where the second one refers to the median. Now, to get that one, there's two different options. So the first option is when we just want to look at calories as a whole, or a variable as a whole. So to do that, we use proc sgplot and we'll create a box plot on the variable calories. So if you run this, as you can see here, we have our box plot. So the first line here is our first quartile, second quartile or median, third quartile, 
The diamond here represents the mean, and these lines here represent 1.5 times the IQR, and they can help us do two things. One, it tells us about the spread, and since this here is longer than this part here, it tells me that it's not evenly distributed as well as it allows us to help identify potential outliers, which we represent by little dots beyond these points here. Now, this is one way for us to create a box plot for calories, but we already know that there are three different types of hot dogs, as well as there may be a possible difference between them. So, let's create a box plot for each type of hot dog. To do that, we actually use the proc box step plot, uh, the proc box plot step. So proc box plot data is equal to hot dogs. Run as always. And now we'll plot calories based on type. So it's cross-referencing it. This is why I can't uh, just do plot calories because there's nothing to cross-reference with. So if I run this, it'll produce a very similar looking graph as before, except now we've divided into three different types, one based on beef, then meat, then poultry. Again, we can see the lines here representing 1.5 times the entire quartile range. We can see the three lines representing the first through third quartile, and in this case here, the plus would represent the mean. But most importantly, we can see here that yes, there is a big difference between the poultry ones versus the beef and meat ones. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is numerical summaries. Now, the nice thing about SAS is that all the numerical summaries can be found in one proc step. In this case here, it's called proc means. And so the data is hot dogs run, and then the variable is going to be calories. Now, to figure out the mean, you simply type in mean, then we have the median. Notice how they've been highlighted as blue, then the standard deviation is STD, then the variance, and if you want to enter quarter range, it's just Q range. So if I run this, now you can see here that for calories, the mean is 137.28, the median is 139.5, standard deviation is 37.7, and the variance is 1,422. But, as I talked about previously, that there appears to be a difference between the types. If you want to determine the same statistics for calories based on type, we can add in the option by. So we do by type, and let's just get rid of these just to make it less cumbersome. So now I'm going to determine the mean of calories based on type. So if we run this, now we can see here that for, let's see, for type is equal to beef, the mean is 156.85. For meat, it's 158. And for poultry, it's 92. And as we saw in our previous graph, the poultry one should definitely be much lower than the mean for the beef and meat. And so this is our introduction to graphical and numerical summaries in SAS.